If you're going on a cruise, especially for the first time, then something that you've probably noticed is that cruising really does seem to have a language all its own. Yes, there really is such a thing as cruise lingo, and I'm going to share with you everything that you need to know. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewallcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. You know, cruise lingo, cruise jargon, cruise terminology, whatever you want to call it, it is real. And obviously it goes way beyond don't call a cruise ship a boat, don't call a cruise ship a boat. That definitely is the first thing. But in this video, I'm going to share with you about 40 different terms, acronyms, things that you really know whether you're on the cruise ship or even if you're in some of those cruise Facebook groups. So you're going to know what everybody's talking about and you're going to feel like a pro yourself. Now, I thought we could make this fun, especially because a lot of people who watch these videos have cruised before. So everybody give yourself one point for every term that you know and leave your score down in the comments below. Now, before we get started, I did want to mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Okay, we're going to start with some basic cruise terminology, and then we're going to move up to some that are a little bit less common, including some cruise acronyms. A cabin or a stateroom. So simply put, in a hotel, you would have your room, but when you are on a cruise ship, you are going to be in a stateroom, or as many cruise passengers call it, a cabin. Deck. Now, when you cruise enough, you actually mix this up when you're at hotels, but hotels have floors, office buildings have floors, cruise ships have decks. The bridge, the navigational hub of the ship. And of course, I think we all know who the captain is. Please let me know if you have cruised before, who is your favorite captain? Please let me know down in the comments below. The cruise director. Now, when I think of the cruise director, I always think of Julie McCoy from The Love Boat. I absolutely love that show. But the cruise director, of course, will host events. But beyond that, they'll also supervise the activity staff. They'll be in charge of the scheduling for the activities and the entertainment on the cruise ship. And they will have a staff that will assist them and possibly host events as well. The cruise terminal. So on the first day of your cruise, you are going to be going to the cruise terminal, which is very similar to the airport and that is where you will be boarding your cruise ship. Cruise ports of call. On your itinerary you will have different destinations that you will stop at. Those are called your cruise ports of call. Shore excursions. So shore excursions are tours or different activities that you can do in your cruise ports of call. Either you can book them through the cruise line in advance or on the cruise ship or you can also book those excursions through a third party or through a local vendor. Tender. Now this is a pretty important one and something that you might want to look at on your itinerary. When you tender, what that means is instead of going to your cruise port of call and docking there so that you can get off and on at your own pace, instead what you will have is you'll have a tendering process. And what this means is that the cruise ship needs to anchor close by to that island or that destination. And what they will do is there will be smaller boats that will bring you back and forth from the island to the cruise ship and vice versa. And sometimes these tenders might be boats that are from the island and other times they may be the tender boats that are right on the cruise ship. Stabilizers. Now all modern large cruise ships that we would be cruising on do have stabilizers and this really does help for those cruise ships to feel much more stable and much more comfortable, especially if the seas are rough. The galley. The galley is a very large kitchen area where probably hundreds if not thousands of meals are prepared for the passengers on the cruise ship. And by the way, something that you might be interested in doing is on many cruise ships, you can actually do a galley tour. That is something really interesting to see how all of that food is prepared and cooked. Dry dock. Now you'll sometimes see that term, people will say the ship is going into dry dock for a few weeks, it will be out of service. And what that means is the cruise ship is going to be going in either for some routine maintenance or it may be painted or it may be refurbished on the inside. And sometimes it's very extensive and it will take a few weeks or longer. And other times it may be for just a week. Charter, this is when a group has rented out in essence that cruise ship and that cruise ship is chartered for a specific group of people. Not, this is a nautical mile. Okay, so let's move on to some of the main areas of the cruise ship. And please let me know if there are other terms that I haven't mentioned, please let me know down in the comments below. Atrium. The atrium is basically usually the central hub of the cruise ship on the interior. It is a public space that will usually span like three or even more decks. Now, not every cruise ship does have an atrium, but it is very common for cruise ships to have this and you will usually have your guest services, maybe you'll have bars and you might even have some shops 
in this area. The Lido deck. So the Lido deck is that deck where you will have the pools, you'll have of course your hot tubs. Oftentimes you will have maybe your Lido buffet. And basically that is a deck that is one of the highest decks on the cruise ship where you will have all of the pools and the deck chairs. Now, when it comes to finding your way on the cruise ship, oftentimes you will hear people talk about the aft. The aft is the back of the ship. There is also the stern, but the aft is really oftentimes when you are on the cruise ship, people will refer to maybe the aft cabins. Those are the cabins in the back. You also have the forward. So that is the area in the front of the ship. Oftentimes you might have the theater that is at the forward of the cruise ship or the front. Now, other terms that you're going to hear when it comes to a cruise ship is port side and starboard side. Now, sometimes that's referred to when you are choosing your cruise cabin as to which side of the ship might be better. Other times you might be on the cruise ship and the captain might say, look on the starboard side, there are whales to look at. So it's good to know which side that is going to be. So just to let you know, it's hard kind of to remember. So port side is when you think about it, port side has four letters, just like the word left. So port side is to your left when facing forward and starboard side is your right when facing forward. Now if you have a different way to remember that please let me know down in the comments below. Now when it comes to cabins there are a lot of choices but here are some main ones that maybe are not as obvious. So of course we have our inside cabins, our ocean view, our balcony cabins, or our verandas. Those are quite obvious, but what is a guarantee cabin? A guarantee cabin or GTY simply means that you are booking that type of cabin or better, but you are not able to choose your cabin, the cruise line will choose that for you. Oftentimes that is a little bit of a better price, not necessarily always do your homework. Let me know if you do like guarantee cabins. Now we also have studio cabins or solo cabins, a cabin for one person. Now you'll also have cabins that are considered triple or quadruple occupancy, and that's just what it sounds like. Four people are in a quad cabin, three people are in a triple cabin. And if you've ever seen that there are Pullman beds and you're wondering, what does that mean? Well, basically the way cabins work a lot of times, if you are maybe three or four people in the cabin is you may have Pullman beds. Now Pullman beds are those beds that are on top of the main bed area. So on top of the twins or sometimes those beds are put together. And basically those beds are coming out from the wall or from the ceiling. Now when they are coming out from the ceiling, oftentimes they can be tucked back up into the ceiling during the day. So they give you space to sleep at nighttime for three or four people, but yet they don't really intrude on your space during the day. Now, by the way, if you wanna remember all of this and not have to take notes, I do have as part of the Ultimate Cruise Planner, I do have two pages of a cruise lingo glossary that are actually a bonus in the Ultimate Cruise Planner. Now the Ultimate Cruise Planner is a 47 page downloadable printable cruise planner that you can print out actually the pages that you need, well, as often as you want and as many as you want. Now included in the Ultimate Cruise Planner are packing lists, but also forms for everything from the time that you book your cruise all the way through disembarkation. Now, if you are interested in seeing what is included in the Ultimate Cruise Planner, I will leave the information linked below in the description of this video. The gangway. So when you get off the cruise ship or on the cruise ship, you are gonna get off on the gangway. And this is an elevated walkway. Sometimes it is covered and sometimes it is not. The wake. For many people, this is just something that they absolutely love to watch the wake. And basically those are the sort of white waves, the trail, if you will, that is left as the cruise ship is sailing forward. Now, these are a few things that you should know, like really for the day that you are boarding your cruise ship. So firstly, you have embarkation day. That is simply the day that you're actually embarking on your cruise ship and you are having your boarding process and everything else that will happen on that very first day of your cruise. The muster drill. Now the muster drill is basically a safety briefing. And nowadays it's sort of an e-muster or an electronic muster. You do still need to check in at your actual muster station, but this is a safety briefing that everybody has to do before usually the cruise ship leaves. The cruise card. Now, when you board your cruise ship, you are going to be given a cruise card or in the case of on some cruise ships, like with Princess, you'll get a medallion instead. But basically what this is going to do is it's going to act as your key card. It's going to also act as sort of your credit card and your identification during the time that you're on your cruise. Your cabin steward. Now, when you do get on your cruise ship, you're going to go to your cabin at a certain point, leave your items, and you're going to meet your cabin steward or your cabin attendant. Now, commonly, this seems to happen that sometimes people will call the cabin steward, the cabin steward, their cabin steward. So it is not steward, it is steward. Also, the mustard drill is not a mustard drill, but is also a common mistake. 
the daily planner. So you will receive a daily planner or sort of a daily newsletter usually left in your cabin every day that you're on a cruise. And this is gonna have your schedule of activities, the opening and closing hours of different things. Now you're also gonna have this on your app. Now on some cruise lines, you may not have the paper planner. You may need to ask for that at guest services. And in other cases, you will still find this in your cabin. Gratuities and prepaid gratuities. Now I know this causes a little bit of confusion, the idea of gratuities, but traditionally when you go on a cruise, there are gratuities that are sort of expected to be paid to the cabin attendant, to your waiters, and even sometimes the behind the scenes workers. So cruise ships, what many of them will do is actually charge sort of automatic gratuities. And you can also prepay these gratuities if you like. Porters, now porters are the people that when you get to your cruise terminal, they will assist you with your luggage. They will put it on a cart and it will be delivered to your cruise ship. Now it is customary to give a small gratuity per bag to the porters. Now there are several acronyms that you'll see commonly used in Facebook groups, on roll calls, maybe on any of the different forums. So we'll go through those and then I have a few kind of fun cruise terminology that you'll probably want to also know. So these are some important acronyms. OBC stands for onboard credit. And basically that's just cash credit that you can use on the cruise ship, usually for anything from your gratuities to booking shore excursions, to booking specialty dining, to even buying some of the different items in the boutiques. B2B, B2B means back to back. So sometimes what people will do is they will book one cruise and then another cruise right after that and they will say that they're on a back-to-back -back cruise now sometimes you'll see b2 b2 b that's back to back to back to back and so on fcc and fcc is a future cruise credit of course many people did have future cruise credits or fccs after the pandemic but as well you can have future cruise credits that are goodwill credits and because you've booked a cruise when you're on board so there are many different reasons to have fccs to use now if you see ta ta may stand for travel agent and it may also stand for transatlantic now when it comes to specific cruise lines you'll often see acronyms used for specific cruise lines and if you're in any of the forums or roll calls oftentimes you will see acronyms used for specific cruise ships as well now i know something that's not necessarily obvious to everyone but it really is i think it's an abbreviation used everywhere but if you are on any message boards or roll calls especially like on cruise critic sometimes you'll see things like ds or dd so ds is dear son dd is dear daughter uh, DH is dear hubby or dear husband. And those are acronyms that people use when they are talking about different people that are on their cruise. A roll call. Now this is something I probably should have mentioned earlier, but I think I forgot about it. But basically a roll call is a group of people that are all going to be on the same cruise ship. And what people will do is ahead of time online, either on message boards, including Cruise Critic, and also on Facebook, what they will do is they'll set up a roll call. And this just means that people can kind of go into the group they can chat within that roll call about excursions about the ship about different things it's a nice way to kind of get excited with other people that are also going on your cruise because maybe your friends and family are going to get annoyed if you talk about it incessantly but sometimes you might have get-togethers on the cruise ship as well now please let me know if you've ever joined a roll call if you found it helpful please let me know down in the comments below now we also have a few fun terms that every cruiser should know so you may have heard this one already but chair hogs basically that refers to people that are reserving chairs usually honestly up at like six o'clock in the morning putting towels and flip-flops on all the chairs so usually we refer to them as chair hogs something else that you'd want to know is peer runners and you want to kind of keep your eye out on that it's a little bit of entertainment at the cruise port at the end of the day and basically these are people that come running down the pier or the dock just as the ship is almost about to leave hopefully they're only pier runners and they did not actually miss the cruise ship usually when they do come running down if they're really just just on time everybody will cheer for them so that is something definitely to watch out for and we also have a term for people who love cruises and i think it's said affectionately but basically cruise addicts or cruiseaholics so if you love cruising that's what you are if you think you're going to love cruising that's what you will be soon. I hope that you did enjoy this video. I'm going to leave all of the information for the Ultimate Cruise Planner, of course, including the cruise 
lingo bonus. I'm going to leave that linked down in the description below this video. Please let me know if there are any terms that I missed that should be in this video. Please let me know down in the comments below and let me know your score as well. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.